Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome you to our worship service at Townley First Baptist. We're glad you're here. Uh, dreary day outside, but nice and warm and toasty in here. So we're glad you came to worship with us this morning. Uh, and we have announcements. Don't forget, no evening worship service tonight. Uh, this is our fourth Sunday. We're supposed to be having dinner this afternoon, but nobody cooked. So. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach knows we're supposed yeah, to Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get accustomed to eat on the fourth Sunday. There you go. But anyway, uh, but we will have uh, dinner uh, December the 10th. That'll be our Thanksgiving slash Christmas, Christmas dinner after the morning worship service. So we shuffle things around, uh, and I'm sure everybody's stuffed after Thanksgiving. Anyway. And so we'll start back with Wanda's Wednesday night at uh, 6 o'clock for the kids, 7 for the adults. Uh, children's Church Leaders Day today will be myself and uh, Bailey. And next week will be Karen Courtney. Lottie Moon Christmas offering goal. Our goal this year is $1,300. We are at $820. So we've got six windows lit, only four more to go to reach our goal. Like I said, Christmas dinner, December the 10th. And next Sunday, if we need the band, it'll be uh, Jacob and Mary. We've also moved our singing at Beach Grove to this Friday night. Not Saturday night, but Friday night. At 6 o'clock, that's December the 1st. Because I think there's a big ball game on sometime on Saturday. So uh, y'all come over and help us sing at Beach Grove Friday night. See how that goes. 6 o'clock. Any other announcements that need to be made? In our Sunday school hour, we had 21 in attendance and offering of $304. 10 contacts turned in and 13 daily Bible readers. We'd like to recognize those who had a birthday in the past week. Anybody? Anniversaries? No birthdays, no anniversaries. Go Good to be in God's house, ain't it? Amen. Appreciate y'all being here today. I pray everybody's had a good Thanksgiving. Um, what page is it? It's not good. That's pretty bad to get up here and forget what number it was. It's page 141. Yeah. <laughs> page 141. The old rugged cross is going to sing all four verses. Everybody stand up and sing out this one.
y'all sing out. Uh, y'all can stay seated. Uh, but I, I've had this uh, today. I'm going to be preaching uh, from Psalm 116. And, uh, and the verse starts it says, I love the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, you love the Lord this morning. And uh, But I just think about all God has done for each and every one of us. Uh, and I just can't help but think of the goodness of God. Y'all listen as, as we sing and sing along. Do you love him this morning? Amen. Amen.
Bibles, turn to Psalm 116. The children can go with Brother Johnny at this time. Testing one, two, testing. Psalm 116. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Have you ever just sat there and just said, hey, I love you. I love you, Lord. I appreciate you. And, and, and honestly, today as we go through this song, we're going to look at all 19 verses. Uh, but I just couldn't help but think about uh, <clears throat> the psalmist here professing his love for God. And, and I know there's a lot of great psalms, and I know... Um, as I told you before, I, I used to read them a lot, and, and and I started thinking about this psalm. It is a very when, when you think about the, the goodness of it, the greatness of this this chapter. You know, to me, it ranks up there with Psalm twenty three. I know that's hard to believe at times, but it's a it's a, a a psalm of thanksgiving, which I know that we just celebrated the day of, of Thanksgiving. And uh, but today, uh, I want to ask you: uh, Are you as thankful today as you was Thursday? You know, was you as thankful today as you were uh, even before that? We've got to be thankful each and every day. And, and, I, and I know today, everybody that's in here, uh, and, I, and I tell you, we've all been through things, right? We've all been through distress. We've all been through uh, depression. We've all been through uh, discouragement. We've been all through all these things. And the only thing that we're able to hold on to and grab hold to, on to is God. Amen. 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 He's a friend that we can always depend on. And, and I know today uh, it, it's just something that we, uh, we, a lot of times we just take so lightly. But, but we see here a man in distress, and he calls upon God. And, and God, um, again, we see his mercy here. Now, we're going to be looking at a believer's statement of faith. Now, I know today, uh, as we read this, you know, there's a lot of uh, kinds of creeds floating around, and, and Baptist, I, and, and, and myself, you know, I believe with all my heart, our creed is always the Bible, the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But there's nothing wrong with creeds as such, uh, since a creed is defined as a statement of faith, a formal summary of, of the principles of the Christian faith. There is nothing wrong with the church quoting a creed as part of a worship service, which I've seen that happen before, but let me just stop right here and say this. The problem comes is when people believe that just memorizing and repeating a few words can actually save their lives. <coughs> Amen? Amen? It's faith in Christ that saves. Amen. Amen? Faith in Christ that saves, not religious rituals. So today, as we look to this, uh, in this psalm, we're going to see a clear statement of faith. And I know as we work through this, you can, uh, I know the first uh, five verses, uh, God hears us. Ain't you glad God hears us today? Later on, we see God helps. And we also see that God is holy. Amen. This morning, He is holy. But let's read uh, Psalm 116. Uh, it says, I love the Lord because He hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath had climbed his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Amen. Amen. To our dying breath, we're going to call upon him. Amen. Amen. The sorrows of death can pass me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Save me. Help me is what he said in there. Verse 5. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. I was greatly 
afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Can somebody say amen there? Amen. amen. O Lord, truly I am the servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thy handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, Praise ye the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we humbly pray today. God, thank you for your word. God, thank you for all that you do for each and every one of us. Lord, those that are saved here today, God, I pray that we would just have a newfound uh, urgency, God, to just say we love you, we thank you, we, we just want to serve you. God, thank you, Lord, for the promises of, of even those that are saints that's going on to be with you, God that it's precious in your eyes. And I'm thankful, God, that we uh, we have that promise of that eternal home, Lord, that we when we leave here, God, we know as a saved individual, God, somebody that's been redeemed, somebody that's been saved by your grace, Lord, to be able to go to heaven, God, to be with your people and be with you forever and ever and ever, God. And, and Lord, I pray right now that you would uh, help us as we preach this, Lord, as we look to this believer's statement of faith, God, that we would stand today on, our, on your word, God, and that we would also try to pattern our life, God, after this psalmist, Lord, and help us, Lord, to serve you each and every day, God, to be the church you want us to be, not what we want to be, but what you want us to be. God, I pray for all the sick, all the ones that's not here, God, you know, all the hindering causes, Lord, and I pray in the name of Jesus you would, you would call them back to you. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. But as we look to Scripture today, as I said earlier, there's all kinds of different creeds and things that people may do, but we know that today we see a statement of faith and how important it is to have faith in Christ first and foremost. Amen. And, 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 this, and in this psalm here, we're privileged to hear a clear statement of faith, and it's arising out of a believer's heart. And in this psalm from the the pen of this psalmist, we, we see here, uh, and we're allowed to be able to see it, his creed, his statement of faith, and he tells us what he believes. And, and that's one thing for sure. If someone that was to ask you, hey, what do you believe? You know, what would you say? And we're going to see here again, he tells, tells us what he believes, why he believes it, and what he's going to do about it. And, I, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Not only do we see what the psalmist had in his heart regarding the Lord, we can see what we should be doing in our lives as well. I know Brother Johnny, it may be a couple of Sundays ago, uh, y'all may remember those bumper stickers that back in the 80s that said, you know, uh, God said it, I believe it, and that sells it. Y'all remember that? Or shirts that said that kind of thing? Well, really, the I believe it in the part don't even matter. Because if God said it, that's it. Amen. We, we know if God said it, it doesn't matter if I believe it or not, that settles it. And, and so today we're going to be looking at the believer and his theme. If we could uh, go back to Psalm 116, verse 1. And I, I appreciate Brady back there today. I, I told him I'm going to give me work out here this morning. But the first part of the verse here, the statement is said, I love the Lord. Think about that for a moment. That, that word in the Hebrew, love, there means to have an affection for, uh, uh, as for a loved one, uh, for like a friend. And I think about when we say we love the Lord, do we truly have an affection upon him that we want to spend all the time we can with? Amen. Amen. Do we? I'm afraid there's a lot of people today that say, I love the Lord. But our actions do not show it. We're not, you know, again, living for him like we should. And so when we see him saying here, I love the Lord, we see he, it's a chorus of joy for him. 
And basically, it's just really like a, a love song. He's song, kind of a love song to him. And when we think about it, it, it is for a redeemed sinner to be able to make that declaration is a blessed thing this morning. Amen. Amen. That we love the Lord. Have you ever told him that you love him? You know, we have many reasons to love the Lord, do we not? we got so many reasons. And, and, and we know as a child of God, the main thing is that faith in Christ. And if you don't have faith in Christ, we know uh, as far as everything going on in our life, you know, God's not going to hear us until we come to that saving uh, knowledge of Christ. But we see here, as far as that precious thing, as far as loving God, you know, man may not return our love. Man or women, I guess you'd say. How many of you ever went through life thinking nobody loved you? Nobody cared. I mean, we've all been there, right? They man, nobody cares. Nobody loves me. And, and you may have experienced things such as that, rejection, and things in your life to make you think that's the case. But I'm here to tell you today, just to give you some good news. Uh, <coughs> God loved us first. Amen. 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 He loved us first. We look at 1 John 4 and 19. It's a verse I know you hear all the time, I'm sure. But it says, we love him because what? He first loved us. Say it again. We love him because he first loved us. You know, I know I, we've got kids and grandkids and we've nieces and nephews. And, and there's times you can sit there and you can look. And, and you know, even in their in the mother's womb, you just love them. You care for them. You know, they're, you know, you just you can't wait to hold them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But to think about, in your mind, you think that nobody can love you. Like I love you. Amen. We've all kind of thought that. You know, I love you. You're my child. You're my grandchild. But when we think about the, the, about God, he loved us first. He, he loved us before anybody could love us. Amen. Amen. And, it, and it's hard for us to comprehend that. Not only did he love us first, but if we look in Jeremiah 33 and 3, he also not only loved us first, but I'm going to give you another exciting thing to think about as far as the love of God, is he loves us forever. Amen. Amen. It ain't just for a period of time and then toss us to the side. It says there, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee. It doesn't say just for the love. I mean, that probably that'd been a true statement as well, right? But it says, with an everlasting love. Everlasting. It's just going to continue to continue to go on. Amen. Amen. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. So not only has he loved us first, but guess what? He's going to love us forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. We can't even comprehend that love. Amen. Amen. Romans 8, 30, 8, 35-39. Starts off, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And, there, and we, a lot of times, we'll kind of go through these. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, nakedness, or peril, which means danger, or the sword, which could be even execution for our, for our faith, those type of things. But we go through those a lot of times, and I think I can also say that there's everybody in this, in this congregation that's been through some kind of tribulation in their life, right? Am I right or wrong? Everybody, everybody, yes. everybody here has been through something, right? Yes. All of us have. From the pulpit to the pew. Distress. Have we ever felt like that before? I mean, just distress. Persecution. I mean, we haven't been persecuted nothing like the early church did. Famine. But I want to focus for a second on nakedness. Now, where I come from, naked. I guess it's how you say that naked. Nakedness. And that word there, it's more than just looking upon someone that is naked or didn't have any clothes on or things like that. What that nakedness means there, it talks about nakedness of the body. But it's to the point that I don't have anything at all in my life. I don't have any money. I don't have a place to live. I don't even have enough money to put clothes on my back. All I can do in myself is be naked because I don't have the, the I don't have the clothes. I don't have this kind of thing. And I started thinking about this. 
You know, when we, when we think about that, all of us today, thank the Lord, we got clothes on this morning, right? Amen. We, we, we're able to walk to the closet, we're able to walk to the chest of drawers. Uh, chest of drawers, that's the chest of drawers. It's not chest of drawers. I, I, I'm not sure enough I thought it was chest of drawers, but it's chest of drawers. But y'all y'all get that later on when y'all eat lunch or whatever. But, uh, but we've all been able to wake up at a home, been able to, even today, walk into a church house with the heat on and with it raining outside, we're not getting rained on in here. We, we've got so much today to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. The goodness of God. Everything God has done. But to think about that person, or, or just think about even if I didn't have nothing, if I didn't have anything where I couldn't even clothe myself, that can't even separate me from the love of Christ. Amen. 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 Does that not do something for you this morning? It does something for me. So that just tells me I'm not bringing anything to the table. The only thing I'm bringing to God is my sin. Amen. Amen. God's going to take care of it. But we have all been blessed. Whether you want to believe it or not, I'm telling you guys, we are blessed. Amen. Amen. We are blessed church. We're a blessed community. I mean, we're a blessed nation. I mean, everybody, I know when we think about everything God's done for us, we don't deserve nothing that he's done. But he goes on to say, as it is written, and, and he, he wrote this in Psalm 44, 22, but he's talking about it here, as it is written, making reference to that. It says, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, does it say we are conquerors through him? It says what? More than conquerors, right? More than conquerors through him that loved us. It says, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in who? Christ Jesus our Lord. Having that faith in Christ today, it tells me right there in God's Word, He loved me first, He's going to love me forever, and if I'm a child of God, if, I, if I, I'm not ever going to be separated from the love of God. Amen. Amen. If I don't have anything, you know, again, we can't bring nothing to the table. So this morning, when we think about this believer's theme from, from verse 1, do you love the Lord? And isn't it great to be able to this morning? Amen. 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 We also see, if we go back to Psalm 116, back to verse 1, Brady, if you don't mind. We're going to see that he says, I love the Lord, and we know it's because. And in the day, honestly, we could sit here and we could talk about all of our becauses. We could talk about what God's done. And, but notice what he is professing to love to God for. It's because... He had heard my voice and my supplications. Now the word Hebrew for supplications means earnest prayer. Praying earnestly to God. <clears throat> he goes on to say, Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. So God has listened to the believer. The blessing of heard and answered prayers. Have you experienced answered prayer in your life? If you haven't raised again. Amen. God's answered prayer, ain't it? Yeah. That earnest prayer <coughs> to God. He is inclined his ear unto me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. And notice too, it says, He hath heard my voice. Sounds like it was an audible prayer, didn't it? I mean, I know God can hear speak inside of it. He, he talks about heard my voice, my supplication, my earnest prayer, because he's inclined his ear unto me, therefore I'll call upon him as long as I live. As I mentioned earlier, that as a child of God, he again, he's going to hear our prayers. And, and I know a lot of times we pray earnest prayers, just like I talked about there, my, my supplication, my earnest prayer. Today I'm here to tell you, I know we live in a micro, microwave society where we expect it. <coughs> That tomorrow, 
but keep praying. Amen. 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 Keep on praying. I've seen God work. When just you thought, there ain't no way God's going to work it out. God ain't going to do this. God ain't going to do that. But guess what? He answers prayer. Amen. Be faithful in that prayer life. Even in Psalm 41, we talked about this in last week. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. I'm not no Bible scholar by all means. I just want to share with you that word inclined right there. How many of y'all ever, you got a baby to sleep, you laid them down in your crib, laid them down on the bed or, or something of that nature? What do you do when that baby starts making a sound? Like, huh, huh. You just sit back and, you know, just, I mean, that, you, know, you sit back and just let it go. You know. Most of the time what you do with a baby is you do doing what? You want to hear what's going on, don't you? I mean, it's just, you're inclined to hear that cry of the child, right? Grandchild, you, you know where I'm going with that. But that bird, that, actually that word inclined there, when it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, he inclined unto my, me and heard my cry. That word inclined is as to, as to catch the faintest sound or the faintest sign from you as far as that goes. And I thought I was thinking about it. I waited patiently for the Lord and he is there listening. He is there listening. He just wants us to pray to him and he's there. And, and I, I just don't know, that's done something for me to think about God listening to our prayers. And, and just like he said, because he has heard my prayer and my supplication, uh, it's just a wonderful thing, answer prayer. We also see, if we go back to Psalm 116, verse 3, he says there, uh, <clears throat> The sorrows of death can pass me, and the pains of hell hold up on me. I found trouble and sorrow. Can we not relate to that at times mm -hmm. in our life? Then call I upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Save me. And, and hear me. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O oh my soul. The Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. So he, he lifted the believer. Every person goes through times of of depression, times of discouragement, times of distress, do no. I mean, let's just be honest, okay? Let's be transparent. I've been reading a lot in Job. Have you ever read Job? I, I would really, if you start thinking about those type of things, just, just focus on Job a little bit. And Job, he lost it all. I mean, he lost everything. And, and I know we could talk about that even further, but he lost every single thing as far as the, the World lost his children, lost his home, lost his, his everything. He lost it all. But one thing, if you look at Job, chapter 14, verse 1, something we all have in common. It says, man that is born of a woman. Okay? We're all born of a woman, right? Yeah. Everybody? Amen. We've been born of a woman. Is a few days. If you look back in James, we're just a vapor, just a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes away, right? Yeah. It's just a few days and full of what? Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> is there any more true statement today? When we think man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. That honestly is one of those common denominators among men. Amen. Amen. Trouble. Trouble. There ain't nobody. I don't care how they portray themselves. I don't care how perfect they make their life look. There's not anyone that has not went through trouble. Amen? Amen. All of us have. There's been times I was going through trouble and I'd sit on a pew and I'd see, you know, that perfect person over here, that perfect person over there, and, and just say, man, they got it all together. They portray themselves that way. But guess what? They was going through trouble, I'm sure, too. All of us are. I don't want us to ever feel like that we're thinking we're better than anybody because that's not the case at all. We've all been through trouble. It may all be different kinds of things that we went through, but what we can all agree with, and that common denominator, is this, song, this, this verse here, man is born of a woman, is a few days and full of trouble. Somebody say amen. Amen. amen.
You need to go a little further, or not further, I guess going backwards to, to something, to Job chapter 5, verse 7. I ran across this the other day as I was reading. It says, Yet man is born unto what? Trouble. Trouble. As the sparks fly up. I thought that was a pretty good verse there to think about. Yeah, we're not only trouble, but I, I think it goes back to natural disasters. I think it goes by, back to, you know, everything going on around us. I mean, it's just like basically hell on earth, really, as far as how everybody, you know, everybody's thinking as far as what's right. Is, 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 you know, what they think is right is wrong, and really what's wrong is right, and they're going against God's word. But we know that man, as we see with Job here, Job, he had a, a, a time of distress, and, and he was down, and, and we know that that through all of this, uh, if we remember what he said, uh, he said, Naked uh, came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. And notice what he said. I know it's not on the screen. It says, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Think about that for a moment. Think about what Job went through, what Job experienced. And through all of that, he didn't sin. God specializes in lifting the fallen. And not only that, but strengthening the weak. Paul, we've been studying him on Wednesday night. I want to encourage you to come and be a part of that with us if you'd like to. To learn more about him. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 7 through 10. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. There's a lot of commentary about what maybe that would have been. But it said, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that he may depart from me. So he, he prayed to God three times. Hey, take this thorn of the flesh away. Take this thorn of the flesh away. Take this away. How many of us have been there? Just take this away. But notice what he says here. And he said unto me, and I know on the screen it's black and white. But it starts with red letters. The red letters are, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So if those if those verses there is red letters, and we see the word my there, who who would say that? It's Jesus, Jesus, right? Jesus. So Jesus' grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, back to Paul, most gladly, therefore, will I rather Glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure. Think about I mean, think of Paul and his example here. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. But notice what it says here. For whose sake? Christ. For Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. Then am I strong. Think about the times he has lifted you. Amen. In our weakness. In our again, our time of, of difficult. We know that God, just like he we experienced there with Job, lost it all, but God was there. He, he's lifted us. He's also, as we saw in verse 8, he's, he's delivered the believer. We know that salvation from, from the sentence of, of death and hell, salvation we experience, salvation and eternal life, saved from hell and the power of sin. Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad one day after a while we'll never, never uh, let him down again. Sin won't be there. Also, we know we've been delivered from sorrow. We've replaced his sorrow uh, that, that, that the believer had here with joy. If we look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 
We're going to read verse 3 and then go down to verse 8 in a second. But verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you will go down to verse, if you go to verse 8, the next one. Um, he says, Whom having not seen, you what? Love. And whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Amen. Just because we can't see, just like that, who we've not seen, you love, just like Peter did there. Trials will come, but they will be attended with his help. And, and I know a lot of times when we when we stumble, we mess up, we, we are given that firm foundation upon which we stand. If we go back to Psalm 41 through 2, just got a few more verses here. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. We read that one earlier, but notice in verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of miry clay, and notice what, and set my feet upon a rock. And establish my goals. We've got to have that foundational feet as is Jesus Christ. If you build on anything else, it's going to it's going to crumble around you, right? Amen. Amen. You've got to build that foundation upon Christ. It's good to be free in Jesus. Amen. We see the believers resolve as well. I know we've we've talked about a lot of verses here. Verse 12 of Psalm 116, verse 12. He says, What shall I render under, unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Basically, he's posing this question, this believer here, this psalmist. He said, How can we ever begin to repay him for all he has given us? We can't do it, can we? And, and, but as we saw in verse 9, we see him saying, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. There's some things that we can do. But the psalmist here, he promises to live right. He promises to live right. And I think it's important for us, if we can look at, at Philippians 1, 27, it says, only that your conversation be as it cometh the gospel of Christ, the whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And today, as a church, as a body of believers that's meeting here this morning under the power of God, under the Holy Spirit, under what Jesus Christ has done for each one of us, it is so important that we stand fast in one spirit, one mind striving together for what? The faith of the gospel. Amen? Amen. It's very important that we do that. We also see too, if we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, through what he has, he has talked about, he, he mentioned, uh, I will take the cup of salvation. Uh, the psalmist promises to believe right, and this actually involves reading this right here. Reading the Bible. Reading God's Word. So study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. You know, I wish I knew more about the Bible than I do. I promise I do everything I can to, to rightly divide the truth. But you've got to study it on your own to know if you're being led in the, right, the wrong direction. You know, I know this morning we, me and Jacob went to go try to see Maxine and they already had Doyle back there. But we was walking down through there and we saw on TV uh, Joel Osteen. You know, so like, we didn't go in there and turn that off. Yeah, we do, don't we? But there's a lot of, lot of so-called preachers today that are preaching things that's, that's not biblical. And there's a lot of people that are falling for what they're saying and what they're doing, you know, because it sounds, okay, it sounds good. You know, if I can take my bill phone and I can donate $10 and he's promised me to get $100 back, you know, again, we talked about earlier, you know, we don't have nothing. We don't have anything. We only have the clothes to put on our back. If we've got the love of God, 
you're richer than that person there. Amen. You know, if you just have a love of God, if you've got Jesus Christ in your heart, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Amen. I don't care who you are. Well, Brother Wayne, I, I don't care. Are you a Christian? You know Jesus Christ? You got faith in Him? You're the richest person on this planet. And, I, and I'm thankful that today I can stand before you and I can say that I love the Lord. And I would encourage you to do the same. We also know the psalmist promises to pray right. He talked about him calling upon the name of the Lord. Uh, the psalmist also, in verse 16 of Psalm 116, uh, the psalmist promises to carry out his promises before the Lord. I think a lot of times what happens, it says, O oh Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am that servant, and a son of thy handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. But if you go back to verse 14, break if you don't mind. The psalmist says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. You know, a lot of times you say, well, God, if, if you'll do this, or, you know, or maybe you've made a promise to God, and maybe you haven't followed through with what that promise was, whatever God's leading you to do. And I know for sure that good intentions will not suffice. We need to follow through. Amen. And it comes back to commitment. It comes back to loving God. It comes back to, to setting your affection on Him above everything. Because He loved us first, right? He's loved us forever. And if we're a Christian, guess what? Nothing can ever separate us from Him. I know Miss Lou's a believer this morning, and you know, there's nothing I can do as a man that I could ever make her be separated from the love of God, right? Amen. If you're, you know, any Christian here today, I can't do anything to separate you if you're a Christian from the love of God. And I'm so thankful that, I, that He loves me as well. The psalmist also promises to praise God, and I believe we need to be more active in that statement. I think we need to be more honest uh, in praising Him. And I know the last uh, look at verse 17 of Psalm 116, and then I'll close. It says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. And then I know in verse 18 too, he said, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. But go back to verse 17. Think about everything we've read in Psalm 116 and what he's offering. A lot of that's all we can do is offer to him our thanks. Amen. Amen. We can offer to him our thanks. The sacrifice of thanksgiving. Have you done that today? Do you love the Lord? Amen. 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 As Sheila comes to play a verse of invitation. This morning, do you know Christ? Do you, are you a believer? I pray that you today, as a believer, let's bow, all bow our heads. Can we all say that we love the Lord? Amen. 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 Can we think about the reasons how God's listened to us? How he's lifted us? How he's delivered us? Amen. Amen. It's important. And all he's asking us is to live right, live for him, walk, not just talk to talk, to walk to walk, Study his word, pray, carry out the promises we've made to him, and just praise him. Because it says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Don't know Jesus Christ, today is the day. But this morning, as a child of God, if you've been convicted this morning, when I ask, have you ever told him that you love him? When's the last time that you honestly prayed to God? Say, God, I love you. I don't want anything. I, 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 just, I just love you. I thank you for what you have done. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. That was the last time you died.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll have a time of invitation. God, we come to you as humble as no how. God, I just want to say I love you. Lord, I thank you, God, for I, when we say because, I can, I can name so many things because of all that you've done for me. And I pray, Lord, if there's anybody here in the sound of my voice that doesn't know your son Jesus as Lord and Savior, God, I pray today that they would have faith in you, God, have faith in and in trusting your son Jesus for salvation. God, I pray today that as a band of believers here today, that you would help us to just love on you, God, to pray to you daily and study your word, be affectionate, God, and just set our affection upon you. Again, just thank you for all your new blessings. Lord, you, you're so good to us. I, I just don't, I don't have the words to put in, uh, just verbalize how much you're so good to us. And God, we praise as a, as a band of believers here today. God, that use us in a mighty way. Forgive us what we're failing and fall short. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask you for